peace truth tribe this video is somewhat requested a lot of times on uh, what kind of love is this podcast when i encourage people to grow spiritually in order to also grow emotionally because as you know i say that you know emotional health without spiritual growth and health is pretty much non-existent you we need that anchor spiritually in order to heal emotionally or grow emotionally some people have asked me well i don't know how to grow spiritually i hear you say you know get into the word and study the word but i don't know how to do that and i've often encouraged people to go to my shop at zarahharrison.com and download this bible study guide that i have and um people have done that but still want a little bit more um explanation i guess so i recently said that i was going to shoot an updated video and so now i'm going to briefly go through each step give you some insight i guess that maybe you know you feel is more personable because i'm talking to you so maybe you can get download the guide the link is in the description to this video and maybe you can do your first study and kind of like pause it after i go over each step and try to do it yourself and that way you'll have like your template in your mind and then this video will kind of serve as a staple and then moving forward you can know what to do so without further ado this is a bible study guide that i wrote it's in pdf form and it is pretty basic the study that i do now is a little bit deeper than this by deeper i mean i might go really deeper into finding using a hebrew lexicon and learning what these european words are really rooted in um so i could really see like oh that's not even really the word but if you're not there i don't want you to feel overwhelmed this is still a lot of the template so steps for study this is like a quick snapshot you can download the pdf in the description to this video but number one the first thing you want to do is petition yah while reading passage three times in three different versions so don't just start reading without petitioning yah ask yah you know please be with me in this study please give me eyes to see what you want me to see this is your word you know what you meant when you said things i understand that you know certain translations can cause me to be confused about certain things but by your ruach i can see even what the enemy meant for confusion so please be with me um and that's what i mean when i say petition y'all while reading um three the passage three times so whatever the version of your choice is you're going to want to read the passage of the verse three different times and i say three different times because you just kind of want to get it in your head sometimes we just read it once it's so surface and we can kind of glance over things that we should pay attention to so read it three different times and in three different versions and i'll explain that as we get through the, the other slides but the reason why i say three different versions is because we know scripture has been tampered with and sometimes one translation will say something that another translation won't say and so sometimes if you read three different versions, you can get a fuller grasp of what it's trying to say. Now, that's not something you have to do. But again, this is something that has helped me in my personal study um, when I didn't really have anyone to show me what to do. I would read certain things and be like, oh, wow, it doesn't say this in that one or some versions uh say it more plain but you know you you still want to have the other version because even though it's more plain in the version that you prefer the other version has some words you didn't really know and i'm really into words and wanting to really understand what words mean um and so for me reading the passage in three different versions in addition to reading it three different times in the version of my choice is crucial the next number two is you want to note the differences and what i mean by that is like i said some versions are going to use different words or uh, one version will say that this is the person's name another version will say this is the person's name and they just use different words and it kind of will show you sometimes what you may have been missing when you notate the difference the third thing you want to do you're going to note people and hints about character and the reason why i added that step is because oftentimes there are stories in scripture to show us when people behave a certain way what they reap out of that character um if you have 
flawed character traits. It will show you what Yah does not like, how he may respond to it. When you have righteous character traits, it will show you what Yah is pleased by, what gets his attention, um, what causes him to uh, kind of like lean his ear towards you. Um, and so when I say note people and hints about their character, when you choose a passage, what do you think Yah is saying about this person's character? Why is this person and, and their behavior relevant? Because oftentimes, like I said, emotional health is deeply connected to spiritual health. And we can learn so much about how to heal, what to do or not to do to, you know, um, move forward in life or to be held back in life or to get caught up with toxic situations. And so when you know people, you can go back and say, what, how does such and such behave? What got them into trouble? What may be some things that such and such did that I should not do or that I should borrow from? And um, those hints about their character can help you grow in your understanding of Yah, um, your relation to other people, and just within your own self. Step four, you're going to note main the main lesson in relation to Yah, Yahusha, and or the Ruach Kakadesh. So Yah is Yahuwah, Elohim's name, Yahusha, and or uh, we, in Yahusha we know is um, Hamashiach, which is the Messiah and or the Ruach HaKadosh, which is, you may know as the Holy Spirit. So you want to note the main lesson in relationship to each one, because we're going to relate to the to these three different parts in different ways. And we want to know when we see certain things in scripture, why is that? Why do they relate to Yah this way, but then Yahusha this way, and then the Ruach HaKadosh this way? Those things are going to help you grow. They're going to open your eyes to things that you may need to change as far as how you relate to see, how you perceive, how you even um, acknowledge Yah, Yahusha and or the Ruach HaKadosh. So pay attention to that. Number five, you're going to determine central truth in one sentence. Now, this is what some people struggle with the most because they don't know how to make one sentence out of what they've understood. It's like, I can't say this in one sentence. I can do three or four, but I can't say this in one. The reason why I say determine the central truth in one sentence is because it's very hard to remember three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines. But when you write out one central truth, that will become a staple in your mind in regards to your study. And it forces you to be incredibly specific. The more specific you are, the more you can get to the root of what Yah is saying. So you're basically like, what if this could be uh, turned into a quote, the study that I did, what would that quote be? Quotes are a lot easier to remember than whole books. Or say you watch a movie or something, it's a certain line that always stands out. What is that line that stands out from the study? Just one line so that it can help you remember what the study was about. It's, it's like a, the takeaway the one takeaway that you believe that y'all want you to get from this study. Number six, you're going to name the study based on the main characteristics that you believe you've found or that you've noticed. And the reason why you want to name the study is because it helps you categorize it. Like um, as you do a study, you can have like a table of contents at the beginning of your notebook or your binder or whatever. And you may have like one and you can title it and put the page number and then you can have your own little book and it will show you where to go regarding the title and even sometimes certain keywords. Some people like to just skip that step and say that's not important, but it actually is very important because it helps you organize your understanding. You know what I mean? So you're not like, I did a study on this. What was it again? And you're just kind of looking at all of your notes, but you don't have anything specific. So oftentimes, you know, I would have the title that I came up with, whatever page number that might be in a binder. And then under the title, I might have the actual, the one liner, the central truth. And it, it really organizes it when I'm trying to figure something out or I need to find something quickly. Uh, the seventh step, you're going to note subjects plus words for more study. So the word is so full. <laughs> It's so full. So sometimes you will read something and you'll find yourself drifting all over into scripture and you done got all off focus because you found this word and you're like, oh, let me see what this means. 
Oh, I wonder what this subject means. Oh, and, and now you jump in and you look up and you never completed a full thought because you it led you all in these different directions. This section is so that you can remember what you want to look at later when you're done studying so that you don't drift off track. You list any words come up, go back to that area and write them down. Any subjects or themes you feel like you want to revisit, write it down, but stay, stay focused, right? Number eight, you're going to note the new truth learned. Again, I have read verses and passages and will get a new thing every time I do a study. Um, I'll never all, always just get the same exact thing. There's something else that y'all will amplify off the pages and show me. If I took a, a scripture and I studied that exact same scripture every day for a week, my study would be something different. It literally would because, you know, they say the word is living and it truly is. It, it is alive. Those You will learn and take away more than one thing from it if you're intentional and your heart is open to hearing what Yah wants you to see and you're petitioning y'all while you're doing it. Number nine, you're going to determine action that needs change. So what will you do differently? So we don't want to just be puffed up with knowledge like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the whatever sees where we know so much, but we don't change. We don't ever do anything. You've ever met someone who knows a lot of scripture, but their life just doesn't look like it. Like they know how to rehearse things. They know what verses. Um, but when it comes to behavior, behaviorally doesn't match what they say they know, um, it, it doesn't show in their life. And so real knowledge, if you really know it, you actually do it. So they really don't know it. You want to determine an action that needs to change based on the study. What is something that you need to do different now that you've done the study? And that means that you're asking yourself a question of what will I do differently based on this study and then actually do it. Don't just write it down. And so sometimes I've had sticky notes and I've written it down and I'll put it on a mirror or put it in the shower right up where the, um, the, the water, the shower head is. So when I'm looking up, I can see it somewhere where I can see it. And subconsciously these things are like in my mind, right? Yah wants us to, uh, grow in his word so we can change not just stay the same. So step number nine is very important. Step number 10, because we can't change ourselves and we really need Yah's help, is petition Yah for deeper understanding plus application. So sometimes we can walk away from a study and we swear we, you know, I got, I, I get it. You always still want to circle back with Yah and say, Yah, correct me if there's something I thought that I got and I really didn't get it. Um, this week, show me, let this word come alive even more. Show me where I may have missed it or amplify it where I can learn more. And then help me walk out the thing that I said I'm going to do differently. Show me how I can do it differently and convict me and remind me when I have opportunities to do that. Right? And I want you to note the black box on the bottom right of this steps for study list. This study is 10 steps, but if you want to do a shorter study and you feel like these 10 steps are a little bit too long for me, or it's a little bit more, you know, than I can handle right now, just focus on steps one, five, eight, nine, and 10. So the next few slides that I'm about to go through, if they're too much, when you print out the PDF, just do one, five, eight, nine, and 10. Fill those in and it, you will still be able to get a great study out of whatever passage you're first you're looking at. So this is a, a sample study when, like I said, when you download the document, you will see these uh, things kind of filled in for you as a model uh, so that when you do your own study, if you kind of forget, like, what does that look like again? You can go back. It will refresh your memory or you can rewind this video but it will refresh your memory and then you can go ahead and answer it accordingly. Lucas, Hebrew for Luke, chapter one, verse 37 through 38. And so I have the Sefer version, ESV and Amplified version listed. You can use the uh, versions of your choice. These are just the versions that I chose to use for the sample study. And I put that it is also effective to read the whole chapter 
containing the verse you are studying so that you study within the proper context. Context is crucial to accurately dividing the word of Yahuwah. And so we want to be careful only um, studying a verse or just a passage from a whole chapter because sometimes it will look like it's going in one direction and by the end of that chapter it went in a totally different direction. And because you didn't read the whole chapter, you may miss um, some understanding, uh, that you need to make sense of what you're studying. So focus on the verse or the pack, the uh, passage for your actual study, but just read the whole chapter so that you will have a, uh, some background understanding. Sometimes I'll even read the chapter before it and the chapter after it, after it, before I do my study. Um, if it's just not making sense and I'm like, what, what happened before this then? Cause I don't know what they talk about. Whenever you hear the word therefore, and a chapter may start like that, you got to go back and be like, what is therefore mean? What happened? Um, or it can end a certain way. And I'm like, let me just dip ahead real quick and see what happened. And then I'll come back and then I'll do the study. So again, totally up to you, but, um, at least read the chapter that the verse is inside of so that you will have some, some context. The next thing you want to do again is notate the differences. And so you see here, I said that the Sefer calls her Miriam, the Hebrew name, not Mary, plus a handmaid versus a servant. So the Amplified um, adds uh, that nothing is or ever shall be impossible. And the ESV says something different. The AMP says something different. You know, why is the name Mary in one version, but Miriam in the other version? That kind of helps you see, hmm, why did they change the name? What is that? You know, what's going on with that? Why did they use this word? Why did they use the word handmaid in the Sefer, but then they're saying servant in another word? What is the difference between a handmaid and a servant? It starts to get your mind seeing, wow, these, these things are really changed. These translations, you know, they mean different things. If you're not um paying attention you can just think that it says one thing and then you go a little bit deeper and you see wow this is a uh, has a fuller or a deeper understanding than i thought uh, again we know what uh step three is you want to note the people and hints about their character so the people listed here was miriam the one who is to become pregnant with yahusha is mentioned and an angel one of yas the character note about Miriam was she seems to show faithfulness, devotion, surrender, and obedience to Yah. I'm really impressed with how quick she is to want to please and obey Yah, even though, and you can see the rest, it's just a note about her character. Then you, you want to note the main lesson in relation to Yah, Yahusha, and or the Ruach HaKadosh. So in relation to Yah, the model study says, Miriam says that she's a handmaid or servant of his. Perhaps I must behave as his handmaid and or servant too. In relation to Yahusha, it says, Miriam seems, after reading in context of the full chapter, chosen to be that one who will become pregnant and birth him into the world he'll later save. In relation to the Ruach HaKadosh, Miriam seems to be open and respecting of what Yah has to say. And then I think the main lesson is that I must A, behave as his handmaid or servant. B, C, and you know, you're just kind of going to list the, you can look at the model, but you're kind of going to list it. I determined determine the central truth in one sentence. So reading that passage um, the one line that the model study shows is a true servant of Yahuwah willingly surrenders to him according to his word in order to witness him fulfill the impossible. You know, this is not something, uh, Miriam knew seen. It was just like, what? And yet, you know, she, she surrenders to Yah in that. And this is an understanding that's coming out of, of the study. So the next step, name your study based on the main characteristics. And so the name of the study turns out to be true servants willingly surrendered to Yah according to his word and impossibility results. And that will make sense when you look at the model. I'm not going to go, like I said, all the way deep in seven um, note subjects and words for further study. So subject uh, may be our topic serving Yah. What does it mean to serve Yah? handmaid's role what does it mean to be a handmaid because it mentions that in the separate version some words you may want to further look at is impossible what does it what does that mean 
in uh, Hebrew, impossible. That word didn't exist. They didn't speak English. So what? Where did they get the word impossible from? Let me look at what that is, and then I can go a little bit deeper and do a word study. Servant, maid, servant, handmaid, um, and then I leave a link, uh, which is Strong's Concordance, or you can also use like a Hebrew lexicon um, when you get the roots of these words and you trace it back. So when you go to the lexicon, it will usually tell you the Greek version, but there's also Hebrew lexicons that will tell you basically the, the original Hebrew word that was supposed to have been used. And that will help you make sense of what you're reading. You know, back then that they didn't speak English. They don't, they didn't speak that way. And so what was the word, you know, go back and see what it is. And it will give you uh, such an amplified understanding. Uh, next step, no new truth learned. And so the truth uh, for the model says, Yah doing the impossible in my life has a lot to do with my obedience to him and his word. Yah will choose me to do things I don't understand, yet I must still obey his instructions willingly. And if you go back through, you'll see why that understanding came out of the study. Next, you're going to uh, the action, determine what you will do different as a result of this study. And I may try to make things make sense to me before I obey what I know Yah is telling me to do. That is disobedience. As a result of this study, I will do what Yah has been telling me to do and do it willingly. Also in the future, I will obey him without delay. Maybe I'll start to see some things that have been impossible for so long become possible as I surrender according to his word. Again, if you go look back in the study and certain things that stuck out, you'll see that. Then it says petition Yah for deeper understanding plus application. There's a sample petition or request to Yah based on the study. Page eight is where your turn starts. So you'll see a line there where it says add step six there. That's where you would add the title. But you want to work through the, some basics of the study first before you come up with a title. Because again, you don't know what you're going to get from the study yet. But by the time you get to step six, you should have a little bit of a understanding of, of what the topic or theme is. And then you can go back and write that at the top. And like I said, in a binder, you may uh, have one page where you're just listing the table of contents and, and then that will be in the front uh this title will be at the top of your study uh so here is where i've kind of done everything for you and you just fill it in um it's pretty easy you can just make copies of it so one you're gonna um get the version of your choice and then you're gonna find different translations and write them down i have four boxes there just in case you have an extra translation that you want to use but you'll write the the scripture and then you can you can either at the top just write the translation in the other three at the top instead of the scripture again or you can just write the scripture again and then write it how i wrote it what the translation is and then write it down it's important to write it out because the more you write it out, the more alive it becomes. You don't you you don't want to just say I read it and you didn't really write it out. You should write the actual verses out. It's something about when I am doing my studies and I write down each translation that it just it gets um, anchored in my head, in my spirit. It starts to it's almost like a warm up to what Yah is about to do because I'm writing it over and over again. So in addition to reading it, like I mentioned, you want to also write it down in these boxes. Next, you're going to notate the difference between the different versions. Again, you can put the, I left three boxes here. You can put the versions up there um, that you're looking at. And then in each box, just notate the difference. Like you saw on my page, I didn't have boxes, but I figured it would be easier for you uh to have boxes than for me to write lines and so you're basically going to do what i did on the lines in the model example above these pages you're just going to write it in the boxes uh next note people and hints about their character again you have the top where it says person you're going to write the person's name and you're going to list some character traits that you saw about that person that was brought up in the passage if there was no person then you know you don't have to list any characteristics Next, note the main lesson in relation to Yah, Yahusha, and or the Ruach HaKadosh. So sometimes it may not say anything about the Ruach. Sometimes it may not say anything about Yahusha yet. Just know that it may not be, whatever you read, there may not be a relation to all three. But look for it though. And then just write it in the box. And then what do you think the main lesson is in relation to these three boxes? 
Next, you're going to determine the central truth in one sentence. One sentence. This forces you to be specific. This is crucial. Uh, when I'm counseling or coaching and I'm kind of trying to help people get to, root, to the root of their problems, one of the things that I'm very adamant about is getting specific. Get specific. The more specific you are, the closer you can get to the root. So you're going to make sure you keep it one line. Don't fill this up with two and three sentences, y'all. One sentence. And then next you name the study. And then again, you can go back and write the name in the uh, the beginning of the study. Next, you're going to note the subjects or words for further study. And again, I have a link there in the PDF. When you click it, it'll actually take you there. So when you download the PDF, uh, if you choose to download the PDF, uh, make those pages favorites. And so create a folder online make it a favorite so that you have easy access to go right to those links every time you do your study but on one side you have the subjects and then on the next side you have the words just list them and that way when you want to do a different study after this you have your list of what you want to work on already um this is the section where i also will if a thought comes up or like another bible study i want to do on a different passage comes up because i do like a cross reference i'll also i'll also add that there Next, you're going to uh, note new truth learned, truths learned, and you have A, B, and C, and you just write them out. If there are more than that, you're welcome to flip the page over and write it on the other page, even though I don't have extra boxes. Uh, I just, I did three so we could kind of keep it concise. And y'all can see, I don't know if you see behind me, the sun is coming up. I started doing this recording around five in the morning and now it's going on like six. Um, and I didn't even go to sleep yet, y'all. I've been up all day, but I'm like, let me get this out of the way because I said I was going to do it. And if I don't do it now, I don't know the next time I'm going to be able to do it. So anyway, uh, nine, you're going to determine the action that needs to change. What will you do differently? You're going to write it in that box. And this is just a great record to hold yourself accountable to. Go back through your studies and go back to number nine. And what do you do? Go look at what you write, wrote at the end of the week. Look at box number nine. Am I growing in this area? At the end of the month, look at box number nine. Am I applying these, these lessons and these, and these words and these revelations that Yah has given me? Or am I just retaining knowledge? Because if you're retaining knowledge but nothing about you is changing, it's pretty useless. You know? So hold yourself accountable with, by using box number nine. It really helps and it really works. Ten, petition Yahuwah for deeper understanding and application. This is where you're going to make your request to Yah about the things that we talked about. Yah, help me not, uh, help me see, show me whether I saw this correctly, correct me if I didn't, and also help me apply number nine, step number nine. Like, be with me, help me really do this, Yah. And you'll petition that there. And uh, this is a great way to see also if you are working with Yah to answer that request. With that, I hope this video has helped you. I hope it has given you some hope because some of you were really feeling overwhelmed. Like, I don't even know where to start when I study the Bible. And again, this is a pretty basic, um, anybody should be able to do this. You know, it's, it, it doesn't require deep, deep knowledge to, to get some understanding or start to grow in Yah. It's a great, great starting point. So I know that it will help you if you, especially if you petition Yah before you get started. And y'all know my tagline, love doesn't lie or expect you to live one. And because your emotional health is so deeply connected and nearly impossible without spiritual health, this document is definitely going to help you. So download it today.